As a result of that, and, and this is something people have difficulty understanding, partly because the nuclear industry uses language that is deceptive. Uh, whether it's deliberate or not, you can judge. But th they call it spent fuel, and of course, spent, you think of this exhausted fuel, which can barely summon the energy to sort of, you know, do anything. It's totally spent. But in fact, it's millions of times more radioactive than the fresh fuel. So it's far more dangerous than the fresh fuel ever was. And that's something that people have a difficulty understanding. That's why we have this high-level radioactive waste problem. It's because all those fission products, which are not disseminated in the mushroom cloud, they're concentrated in those fuel bundles. And it's all there. Now, uh, so what do you do? Uh, and by the way, these fuel bundles, the radioactivity alone is so extreme, so uh, high, that they generate heat spontaneously just because of the radioactivity. So much so that inside a nuclear reactor, you know what, most, rea most machines are like this. You want this machine to be in a safe condition, what do you do? You turn it off. If you turn it off, it's safe, right? Uh, you pull the plug, you turn it off, whatever. Well, with a nuclear reactor, even if you turn it off and the fission reaction is completely stopped, the problem is the radioactivity cannot be shut off. And the result is you still have a tremendous amount of heat being generated by the radioactivity of the spent fuel, so-called spent fuel. So much heat, in fact, that if you do not remove that heat, the fuel, the core of the reactor will spontaneously melt at a temperature of 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's called a meltdown. The reason it's called a meltdown is because the melting point of steel is only about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So that when you have a molten core of 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it just melts through everything else like butter and goes right into the ground, and that's what happens with a meltdown. Now, at Three Mile Island in 1979, there was an accident. You may have heard about that. Uh, what really happened there was uh, a situation involving two valves. The first valve was one that was mistakenly left in the closed position when it should have been open, and they didn't notice that. And when they started the reactor up after a maintenance shutdown, why was that valve important? The reason it was important was because there was emergency water that would come through that valve in case the main pump stopped. Well, they had a little accident. The main pump stopped. The backup pumps automatically started just as they were supposed to. The reactor was shut down within two seconds. The reactor was totally shut down within two seconds automatically. And within eight minutes, they discovered the problem, that the problem was that that valve was shut. They opened it up. Once they opened it up, the water was restored, and everything should have gone back to normal. But inside the reactor, they didn't know that there was another valve which had automatically opened to relieve the pressure. It's called a pressure relief valve. And that valve should have closed automatically. It was designed to close once the pressure was relieved, and then there would be no problem. Well, it stuck. It's stuck in the open position. And for the next two days, they were losing water from the core of the reactor, and they had no idea what was going on. There were dozens of people in the control room. They had people flown in by helicopter, by plane, and so on. All the experts in the country it took them two days to figure it out. And fortunately, they did figure it out. They, they managed to get that valve closed by remote control, because it's too radioactive for any human being to go in there. and. Uh, uh, they only got a partial meltdown. The meltdown was only about the first four feet of the core had melted down. If they had waited another 24 hours to fix that problem, it probably would have gone all the way, and you would have had a much worse accident. So this is an interesting thing to bear in mind, because when we talk about nuclear safety, that's what we're talking about. Nuclear safety means making sure that under all possible circumstances, even when the reactor is completely shut down, you have adequate cooling to the core of the reactor. That's why people worry about things like earthquakes. It's not because an earthquake is going to break open the reactor like an egg. It's because the earthquake can damage the valves and the piping and very subtle damage, damage which would be inconsequential in most circumstances, can lead to very serious, drastic consequences. And the reason for that is because of this enormous inventory of highly radioactive material, which you cannot get rid of. Uh, it's just there. Now, uh, here's the core of a Kandu reactor. This is a, the Darlington reactor in Ontario before it started up. 
Of course, the man who's standing there would be dead if the reactor had started up because the core would be much too radioactive to allow him to survive. But this is before it ever started operation. Uh, what we have here are hundreds of tubes which go through the core of the reactor, and those tubes contain the uranium fuel bundles, and that's where the fission process takes place, and that's where, of course, all these fission products are created. If the reactor malfunctions in a massive way, you can get melting and dissemination of some of those fission products into the atmosphere. Here's a gentleman. He was a gentleman uh, who's an RCAF corporal. His name was Barney Paulson. He's passed away now. But he came to visit us uh, because he wanted to get compensation for multiple cancers. He had, uh, had already, when he came to see us, over 200 operations for cancer all over his body. And the reason he had the, all these multiple cancers was because he was one of 600 military men who were ordered to go to Chalk River to clean up uh, a nuclear accident, which was a bad accident in 1958. And these 600 military men, the thing that, that really struck me, uh, we, we, we helped this gentleman out over a period of years. We went through seven different hearings and we ended up going to the Superior Court of Canada and he finally got compensation for, as he should have in the first place for his accident. The thing that really amazed me was that the nuclear people had never tried to follow up the health of these people. These people, these 600 young people, many of them were just, uh, you know, teenagers. Um, they never bothered to follow them up to see what health problems they might have. They just didn't seem to be interested in that. I was very struck by that and I found it very strange because you would think that if they wanted to learn about the health effects of radiation, they would have paid close attention. Here's a, a woman uh, who is expressing her opinion at a public meeting. Uh, her name is Joyce Karate, and uh, she's a little upset because she lives in the town of Harrisburg where the Three Mile Island reactor was. And she doesn't like the idea that they're planning to decontaminate the reactor building, which was full of radioactive gas from the accident. And the way they were gonna decontaminate it is by letting it out into the atmosphere in little puffs. And uh, she is expressing her opinion that this is not the best thing to do to decontaminate the reactor by contaminating the environment. Now there was something else they could have done. They could have frozen this stuff. Uh, there is a technology for doing that cryogenically and shipped it off site, but that would have cost a lot more money. And so in fact, they did go ahead and do what she was objecting to. Some years later, there was a court case and the court ruled that they had acted illegally in uh, they had not followed procedures properly and that uh, they had uh, not, not obeyed the law. Here is another picture. This is from another accident that everybody has heard about, the Chernobyl accident in Russia, uh, in the Ukraine rather, excuse me. Um, and what this is, this is just a reefer full of reindeer carcasses in Lapland in northern Sweden. Now you know the Laplanders, they harvest reindeer, they're, they're domesticated and they raise them for meat and they harvest them and these the reindeer did not die from radiation they were harvested but uh, the reindeer meat is too radioactive for human consumption and uh, so there they are these are the, the what they call the becquerel reindeer the becquerel reindeer are the reindeer that you can't eat because there's too much cesium-137 in them uh, so that's why we don't want to have uh, nuclear accidents. 